By the way, if I was the Milwaukee Bucks, knowing that Bradley Beal could go to the Miami Heat or somebody in the East, if I was the Milwaukee Bucks today, I would trade Chris Middleton, a couple of first-round picks for Bradley Beal. Beal's better than Chris Middleton. You'll have a 1, a 1A, two-level All-Stars, and you're also keeping him away from Pat Riley. And if I'm Washington, Chris Middleton and two first-round picks, I'd take that. So that if you can't just sit back. Golden State doesn't just sit back. The Rams don't just sit back. They add Bobby Wagner. They go out and add OBJ. A lot of people like they're content. Ooh, we won a championship. Yeah, how's that work for Milwaukee in their history? Upgrade. Chris Middleton, send him to Washington in two first-round picks. You get a better player, Bradley Beal, back at 28. Nobody's beaten Milwaukee in the East for years. By the way, if you're Boston and lose this series and they pulled that deal off, that'd be a, was that our big shot? Rick Buecher, Fox Sports, NBA, covered it since the early 90s. So I was saying to start the show today, I said they're superstars and stars. And superstars are not only, you know, a star is an all-star, best player on a team, averages 20 a game. The league's got 20 of those guys at any one time. The difference is a superstar is you can throw anything at them. Utah had a great defense. Michael still got his. Celtics have a great defense. Steph got his. And I think that kind of separates Steph and Tatum. Is, and Luka, to this point, we've seen Luka somewhat discombobulated. We've seen Tatum somewhat uh, eroding. And I, and I think this is what Tatum is, Rick, is that he's verbalized his lack of confidence He's a really good NBA player. But if they lose this series, do we have to just acknowledge that's what Tatum is? There's no superstar here. Just a really, really good player. At least, at least for right now, Colin. It is what he is right now. And we use the term superstar way too loosely. We apply it to, to your point, both superstars and stars. And you are correct in terms of the difference between Steph and and Tatum, and it's why I picked the Warriors to win this series, essentially, because of the guy that you're going to go to in close games, and I expect the rest of this series to be close games. So, uh, But I don't want to dismiss or close the door on the possibility that Tatum can be more than what he has been to this point, because so much of what he's doing or the mistakes that he's making are decisions. It's the decision-making. It's the boneheaded decisions that uh, in, in the last game, I saw four or five of them in the first half. You simply can't have that from your best player. And so right now, it's why I don't want to put the ball in his hands or want to go into this game five thinking Jason Tatum has to have this huge game. No, because when they've done that, when he's approached it that way, it means the ball's in his hand early, and he's not only getting his, but he's making decisions for everybody else. And his decision-making has been at the heart of his problems. I don't have him a problem with him shooting or looking to get him shots. I just don't want him to make, be the decision-maker and the creator of all those shots because he hasn't done a very good job of differentiating between when the shot is there for him to take and when he needs to be getting it to somebody else. So if you're Boston, do you throw the kitchen sink at Steph tonight, uh, or do you expect Steph to have another great night? And, you know, he's had great nights in every game. They haven't won every game in the series. They're 2-2 through 4. What, what do you think the Celtics do? What do you expect from Steph tonight? I am, I am trying. I'm going to make somebody else beat me other than Steph Curry. I'm going to make Klay Thompson have that game that everybody's been waiting for. I am, or, or Draymond Green, or who, Andrew Wiggins, whoever it is, I'm going to make them uh, beat me. Because this trying to wear Steph down, while it has had a certain uh, effect, the reality is, is that Steph has, has demonstrated that he can get through that. And so, I, look, um, I, I, would, I don't know how Boston is going to approach it, but that's how I would, uh, I would approach it. I'm, I'm not going to leave it to Steph to beat me as the, as the closer or the go-to guy because he's demonstrated that uh, he, he's, he's the best, as we expected, as we would have expected right. going into this series. Steph Curry has played like the best player in this series. All the other talk about you know, what this means and where it goes with his legacy. First of all, we're 2-2 in the series. He's demonstrated that he's the best player in this series. That's what I expected him to do. Has he done a little bit more than we've seen in previous finals? 
Yes. How much that has to do with the Boston Celtics remains to be seen. But this idea that he's already the MVP of the series, it's 2-2. We got potentially three games left. Let's not rush to judgment or change our thoughts about legacy until we actually have seen how this series plays out. I still think the Celtics have matchup advantages that force the Warriors to do things they'd rather not do. And I think it starts with Robert sure. Williams. So if Robert Williams uh, plays 28 minutes tonight, I have it, I would be the least shocked person in the world if they clamped down on the interior scoring for the Warriors and nobody outside of Steph could hit shots. So I, I still contend the, the Celtics make the Warriors do things they don't like to do because of yeah. Robert Williams. Here, Colin, the Boston Celtics are the better team in this series. And Robert Williams is at the heart of that as a protector of the rim, as you, as you mentioned. Like, everybody thinks of the Warriors as being this three-point shooting team. What makes them so lethal is their ability to finish at the rim as well. Robert Williams has negated that in a, in a big way in this series. So he has uh, had his impact, and the Celtics collectively are the better team. They just have not always played up to it, and their decision-making has been at the heart of that. Yeah. What do you make of Andrew Wiggins? Um, he was so good Friday. I mean, they really needed some interior presence, and I don't know what he finished with, like 16 rebounds. What do you make of Wiggins, and how yeah. how is he viewed inside the room in San Francisco? <clears throat> Well, he has made up for the fact that Clay has not been what you would expect offensively. And quietly, the reason that the Warriors have still been able to match the, the Celtics through this series is because he's made up for Dr what Draymond Green hasn't been at the defensive end. He's been a huge plus uh, on, on both ends, and it's why they've been able to survive without those other two pieces there. He is, without question, has been an instrumental part of this. Doesn't always make the, 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 the big shot when you need it, but everything else as an ancillary player, he's been able to contribute. So I'm going to take, uh, I don't even know who I like. I know I, Boston's the better bet tonight. I think it's really close. I think they're going to lead, I think Boston's going to lead at half. I think they know they have to lead at half because the Warriors' third quarter outbursts. <coughs> Your thoughts on what we see tonight? I would expect it to go a lot like we've seen these games go, where Boston uh, has the lead in the first half, the Warriors close it in the third quarter, and then it's just a matter of whether can Boston get any separation at the beginning of the fourth quarter, or is it going to be a possession-by-possession possession game at the end? If it is, then I like the Warriors winning it. If, the, if, the, if Boston can go in the last couple minutes with a double-digit lead, then I think it's theirs for their. To, it's there for them to take. Rick Buecher, as always, Fox Sports NBA. Good seeing you, Buke. You got it, Colin. Uh, Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the herd, or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.